Hello dear students, welcome to lecture series in botany. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is mechanism of phloem transport. In this lecture we will discuss about phloem, patterns of transport through phloem, materials translocated in the phloem and then the mechanism of phloem transport. In plants the two long distance transport pathways are present the phloem and the xylem that extend throughout the plant body. Phloem is generally found on the outer side of both primary and secondary vascular tissues. The phloem of higher plants translocates a diverse range of macromolecules including sugars, organic materials, proteins, RNAs, hormones and some inorganic ions. The cells of the phloem that conduct these materials throughout the plant are called sieve elements. Sieve element is a comprehensive term that includes both the highly differentiated sieve tube elements typical of angiosperms and relatively unspecialized sieve cells of gymnosperms. The phloem collects photoassimilates from the green leaves and distributes them in the plant and heterotrophic plant organs. Phloem is specialized for loading, long distance transport and unloading of assimilates. The conducting cells called sieve elements are highly modified to create a low resistance pathway composed of contiguous living cells whose long term viability is maintained through an intimate association with companion cells. In addition to sieve elements, the phloem tissue contains companion cells and parenchyma cells. In some cases, phloem tissue also includes fibers, cyclorides and lattices. Now sieve elements. Sieve elements that is sieve cells and sieve tube elements are elongated cells having characteristic sieve areas in their cell walls where pores interconnect the conducting cells. Unlike sieve areas of gymnosperms, the sieve areas of angiosperms can differentiate into sieve plates. Sieve plates have relatively larger pores than the other sieve areas in the cell and are generally found on the end walls of sieve tube elements, where the individual cells are joined together to form a longitudinal series called sieve tubes. The pores are bordered by a special polysaccharide called callose, which is made up of several glucose units. The plasma membrane of sieve tube element is continuous with that of its neighboring sieve tube element. Furthermore, the sieve plate pores of sieve tube elements are open canals that allow the transport between the cells. Mature sieve elements are unique among their plant cells. They lack many structures normally found in the living cells. They lose their nuclei and tonoplast during development. Microfilaments, microtubules, Golgi bodies and ribosomes are also absent. Each sieve tube element is associated with one or more companion cells which take some of the essential metabolic functions like protein synthesis that are reduced or lost during differentiation of the sieve tube element. The sieve element and companion cell are often considered as functional unit called sieve element companion cell complex. The sieve tube element of most angiosperms are rich in phloem proteins called P proteins. P protein is found in all dicots and in many monocots but it's absent in gymnosperms. It occurs in different forms depending on the species and maturity of a cell. P protein appears to function in sealing off damaged sieve elements by plugging up the sieve plate pores. Sieve tubes are under very high internal turgor pressure and the sieve element in a sieve tube are connected through open sieve plate pores. When a sieve tube is cut or punctured, the release of pressure causes the content of a sieve element to surge towards the cut end. 
through which the plant could lose much sugar rich phloem sap if there is no sealing mechanism. When surging occurs, however, pea protein and other cellular inclusions are trapped on the sieve plate pores, helping to sieve the sieve element and prevent further loss of sap. Now, companion cells. Companion cells play a role in transport of photosynthetic products from producing cells in mature leaves to the sieve elements in small veins of the real leaf. There are three different types of companion cells, ordinary companion cells, transfer cells and intermediary cells. All these cell types have dense cytoplasm and abundant mitochondria. Now ordinary companion cells. They have chloroplast with well-developed thylakoids and cell wall with smooth inner surface. Few plasmodesmata connect this type of companion cell to the surrounding cells except its own sieve element. As a result, the synplast of the sieve element to its companion cell is relatively isolated from that of surrounding cells, transfer cells. They are similar to ordinary companion cells except for the development of finger-like wall in growths, particularly on the cell walls that face away from the sieve element. The wall in growths greatly increase the surface area of the plasma membrane, thus increasing the potential for the solute across the membrane. Now, intermediary companion cells. These type of companion cells have numerous plasmodesmata connecting them to pundal sheet cells. The presence of plasmodesmatal connections to surrounding cells is their most characteristic feature. Intermediary cells are distinctive in having numerous small vacuoles as well as poorly developed thylakoids. In general, ordinary companion cells and transfer cells are found in plants where transport sugars enter the apoplast during the movement of sugars from mesophyll cells to sieve elements. In these plants, ordinary companion cells and transfer cells transfer sugars from the apoplast to the symplast of the sieve elements and companion cells in the source. Intermediary cells, on the other hand, function in symplastic transport of sugars from mesophyll cells to sieve elements in plants where no apoplastic step occurs. Now, Patterns of transport. Transport in phloem does not occur exclusively in either an upward or downward direction. Rather, it occurs from areas of supply called sources to the areas of metabolism or storage called sinks. Sources mainly include mature leaves that are capable of producing photosynthates in excess of their own needs or storage organs during the exporting phase of their development. Six include any non-photosynthetic organs of the plant and the organs that do not produce enough photosynthetic products to support their own growth or storage needs. Many experiments like girdling and labeling studies support the source to sink pattern of translocation in the phloem. Girdling experiments. Girdling is removing a band or bark from the circumference of the tree. Girdling removes the phloem but not the xylem. Masson and Maskell in 1928 removed a complete ring of phloem from field grown cotton plants in the morning and analyzed samples from both phloem and xylem above and below the ring at intervals. They found that the ringing caused accumulation of sugars above the ring and marked decline below the ring in both xylem and phloem cells. These experiments indicated that phloem was definitely involved in the downward movement of assimilates, although it do not exclude the alternative hypothesis that the assimilates might be moving in xylem as well. They performed more experiments to demonstrate that phloem was the main channel 
of carbohydrate movement in cotton plants. However, they indicated some later movement of carbohydrates from phloem to xylem. Now, radioactive labeling. Use of radioactive isotopes of carbon and phosphorus has provided direct evidence for the transport of carbohydrates through the phloem. Radioisotope of phosphorus P32 was introduced through a small cut on the leaf of cotton plant. Then a piece of wax paper was also introduced in such a way that these separated phloem tissues from xylem tissues. After short periods, the xylem and the phloem tissues were analyzed. Only minute traces of radioactivity were found in xylem and much more greater amounts were found in phloem. Also, the use of C14 radioisotope showed that sugars made in photosynthetic processes are translocated through the phloem C elements. Now, materials translocated in the phloem. The phloem of higher plants translocates a diverse range of macromolecules including carbohydrates, amino acids, proteins, RNAs, hormones and some inorganic ions. In phloem sap, carbohydrates are the most concentrated solutes with sucrose being the sugar most commonly transported in the CU elements. Many other mobile carbohydrates contain sucrose bound to varying number of galactose molecules. For example, raffinose consists of sucrose and one galactose molecule. Stachyose consists of sucrose and two galactose molecules. Verbescose consists of sucrose and three galactose molecules. Now the mechanism of phloem transport. Several theories have been proposed to explain the mechanism of food translocation. Some of them are Diffusion hypothesis Earlier workers believed that food is translocated from supply end to the consumption end by simple diffusion. This theory is not universally accepted because the rate of translocation in phloem is much high than actually could be achieved by simple diffusion and the translocation rate is affected if the supply of oxygen is stopped or when the tissue is poisoned. Now activated diffusion hypothesis. Mason and Phyllis in 1937 modified the concept of diffusion hypothesis and proposed activated diffusion hypothesis. According to this concept, the solute particles are first energy activated and then transported. This hypothesis justified faster rate of translocation but was lacking experimental evidence. Protoplasmic streaming theory This theory was propounded by Devaris and supported by Curtis. According to this theory, the movement of solute is caused by combined effect of diffusion and cytoplasmic streaming. Diffusion occurs from one sieve tube to other sieve tube across the porous sieve plate. By cytoplasmic streaming, solutes move by up and down movement from one end of sieve to other end. The process continues to transport solute for a very little distance and is comparable to cyclosia, but its magnitude is very low. Now, electroosmotic theory. Jones in 1970 suggested that an electroosmotic mechanism may account for the translocation of sugars in the sieve tubes. This theory explains that the current of potassium ions passes through C pores by electroosmosis and the sugar molecules adhere tightly to the K positive ions are carried along the C tubes through the pores. But there is no experimental support to this theory. Now, mass flow or pressure flow model. The mechanism of phloem transport in angiosperms is best explained by the pressure flow model. 
resources, energy is necessary for the movement of photosynthesis from producing cells into the sieve elements. This movement of the photosynthesis from source to sieve elements is called phloem loading. In sinks, energy is essential for some aspects of movement from sieve elements to sink cells. The movement of photosynthesis from sieve elements to sieve cells is called phloem unloading. The pressure flow model was first proposed by Ernest Munch in 1930. It states that a flow of solution in sieve elements is driven by an osmotically generated pressure gradient between source and the sink. The pressure gradient is established as a consequence of phloem loading at the source and phloem unloading at the sink. In sources, energy driven phloem loading leads to the accumulation of sugars in the sieve elements generating low solute potential and causes decrease in water potential. In response to water potential gradient, water enters the sieve elements and causes turgor pressure to increase. At the receiving end of the translocation pathway, phloem unloading leads to lower sugar concentration in the sieve elements, generating higher solute potential in the sieve elements of the sink tissue. As a result, water potential also increases. As the water potential of the phloem tissue increases above the xylem, water tends to leave the phloem and causes decrease in turgor pressure in the sieve elements of the sink. The phloem sap moves by moss flow rather than by osmosis because no membranes are crossed during transport from one sieve to the other. And solutes move at the same rate as the water molecules. Most flow can occur from a source organ with a lower water potential to the sink organ with the higher water potential or vice versa depending on the identities of source and sink organs. Water movement in the translocation pathway is driven by pressure gradient. According to this model and not by the water potential gradient, the pressure driven long distance translocation of the sea tubes ultimately depends on the active short distance transport mechanisms involved in phloem loading and unloading. Now phloem loading. Several transport steps are involved in the movement of photosynthates from the mesophyll chloroplasts to the sieve elements of mature leaves. Triose phosphate formed by photosynthesis during the day is transported from the chloroplast to the cytosol where it is converted to sucrose. Sucrose moves from the producing cells in the mesophyll to cells present in the vicinity of sieve elements. During the process of phloem loading, sugars are transported into the sieve elements and companion cells. The sieve elements and companion cells are often considered as functional unit called sieve element companion cell complex. In sieve elements, sucrose and other solutes are translocated away from the source, a process known as export. Transport through the vascular system to the sink is called long distance transport. Phloem loading can occur via apoplast or symplast. The initial short distance transport is always symplastic. However, sugars enter through the symplast to the sieve elements via the plasmodesmata or they might enter the apoplast prior to phloem loading. The symplastic pathway is present in species that have intermediary companion cells and that transport raphanose and stachyose in the phloem in addition to sucrose. Examples are squash that is cucurbita pupo and melon cucumus mellow. In 
case of apoplastic loading, the sugars enter the apoplast quite near the CU element companion cell complex. Sugars are then actively transported from the apoplast into the CU elements and companion cells by an energy-driven selective transporter located in the plasma membrane of these cells, that is sucrose H positive supporter. The apoplastic pathways occur in species in which ordinary companion cells and transfer cells are present. Examples are potato, that is solanum tuberosum, and tomato, lycoperscon esculentum. Now, phloem unloading. The active loading of C tubes at the sites of production has its counterpart in the active unloading of sieve elements at the sites of consumption, that is sinks. The flowing unloading is the process by which imported sugars leave the sieve element of sieve tissues. After unloading, the sugars are transported to cells in the sink by means of short distance transport pathway. This pathway is also called post sieve element transport. The final step is their storage or metabolism in the sink cells. The phloem unloading and short distance transport can occur via symplastic or apoplastic pathways. As in sources, the sugars may move entirely through the symplast via the plasmodesmata in sinks or they may enter the apoplast at some point. Both unloading and the short distance pathways appear to be completely symplastic in some young dicot leaves such as sugar beet and tobacco. Now the factors that affect the translocation of solutes. There are several internal and external factors responsible for translocation of solutes. Internal factors are cell sap concentration, volume of the water absorbed by leaves and rate at which leaves produce sugar. External factors include light, oxygen availability, moisture content, temperature, which influence the rate of translocation. So friends, with this we conclude today's program and I hope you might have understood the mechanism of phloem transport. See you next time with another topic. Till then, goodbye.